A lot of my videos recently have been centered around home servers, and that's probably because that's what I've been most interested in lately. And I know I did a video previously about what I was running in my home server, but since upgrading my actual server, I'm running a couple of new pieces of software. So that's what we're gonna do today. We're gonna go over what I'm running in my home server in 2021. Let's check it out. Let me explain something really quick. This is about home servers. This is not about enterprise grade servers. I've seen people comment on some of my videos kind of gatekeeping on what is considered a server. Frankly, a Raspberry Pi can be a server if it's serving a function and basically running 24 seven. And that's the beauty with home servers. They can be anything you want them to be. And if somebody doesn't like it, then who cares? So with that said, let's jump into here and see what I'm actually running on my home server. Now it doesn't matter if you're running a Raspberry Pi or a sophisticated Epic based piece of hardware, you're gonna have to run a base operating system on that. And that's where your first decision comes in after you've picked your hardware. You can go with something you're familiar with like Windows or some people choose to go with a Linux desktop or Linux server. Some people go with Mac and run their server on Mac OS. That's fine. Uh, building a home server is great because it's yours. Whatever you're familiar with is what you can deploy. Now in my case, I chose to go with a dedicated hypervisor host OS, and that is going to be Proxmox. The reason I went with a dedicated hypervisor is because it gives you so much more access to your hardware and gives you a lot of flexibility on what you want to do with it. Okay, so here at the heart of my system is Proxmox. Now, it's a dedicated GUI in your browser, so you don't have to have any special software running. You can access it from anywhere that you have access to a browser within your home network. Here you can see I have one node set up and quite a few VMs and some storage. Now, this isn't gonna be a Proxmox tutorial, and I'm not really gonna get in depth with a lot of the stuff I'm doing. This is meant to be a kind of overview video. So here you can see all the VMs I'm running and I'll touch the important ones in a second and then you'll see some storage. Now this local is just the storage that I've installed Proxmox onto and that was onto a two terabyte solid state drive. So, and a cool thing about Proxmox as well is that it can also function as a NAS if you want it to. And when I was running this on my old server, I was actually doing that. But uh, that brings me to my first VM and my first kind of software that I'm running, and that is TrueNAS. And TrueNAS is a dedicated uh, network attached storage or NAS software. So I have TrueNAS running inside of my host OS, but if you wanna host TrueNAS directly as your host device, you can do that. It's great, it performs excellent as a NAS, but it also um, can deploy virtual machines which is why a lot of people choose to use it as their host operating system. Like I said before, Proxmox is a dedicated hypervisor that can also function as a NAS, while TrueNAS is a dedicated NAS that can also function as a hypervisor. So depending on what your use case is, uh, you might wanna go with my setup where you host TrueNAS within your host OS, or you might just wanna host TrueNAS directly onto your server. Either way, guess what? It's your choice. So that is what I'm using as my NAS. So next we have SyncThing, and SyncThing is just running within a Ubuntu VM and making sure that all of the pools that I just showed you in TrueNAS are backed up to my dedicated backup machine. I have a video on how to set that up. I will link it up there. Uh, check it out if you're interested in setting up some type of backup server. It's extremely lightweight, easy to use, definitely recommend sync thing. Mac OS, I actually have a Mac OS VM running 
on my AMD Epic server. So there are a couple of different guides out there to get this set up. Um, I will link the one that I used. It's extremely convenient. Obviously, I have my own Mac, but um, it's also cool playing with it on your home server. And that's a common theme with my home server is that there's a lot of things in here that aren't necessarily essential, but I just like messing around with it. And that's my logic for having it. Okay, Plex, we have a Plex VM and that's just running on Ubuntu uh, desktop. And the reason I'm running that on its own dedicated VM is because I'm hoping in the future, it might even be out now, I can't remember, but allowing GPU pass through to a Plex machine and using that for hardware encoding. I haven't tried it yet, but that might be next on one of my lists of projects. Um, that is why I am running that in its own VM. Portainer. This is one of my favorite discoveries that I've found since upgrading to my new server. Portainer is a Docker orchestrator that makes deploying Docker containers so much easier. Now, if you're anything like me, you were extremely intimidated when you first got into the world of Docker. But Portainer makes it super easy to handle Docker images um, and containers. I have it running in its own dedicated VM. And what it's gonna do is allow you to easily deploy Docker images. Now, if you look in here, you can see it separates it into volumes um, for your storage. You can also go over here and see what images you have or you have downloaded and that are being used. Um, and most importantly, you can see your containers that you have running. Now you'll see I have four running, uh, two Heimdalls, uh, one guacamole, and Portainer is its own self-hosting container. And the cool thing that I absolutely love about Portainer is over here, uh, there are so many common things that you want to deploy uh, relatively quickly just to mess around with or for production needs. Uh, you can go over here into app templates and they have so many useful pre-built images that you can deploy in literally a minute. So if you wanna spin up an Nginx um, web server, you can do that, a MySQL database, uh, a SQL server. Uh, there's so many things in here, Plesk, Drupal. Uh, down here is actually my favorite, WordPress. Before spinning up a WordPress site was an ordeal, but with Portainer, you can literally just click on this, name it, give your database a password, and deploy. It takes probably 30 seconds. Mine's actually not running right now, but I do have these running, which you're probably wondering, well, why does he have this delicious avocado dip running in Portainer? Let's check that out. Uh, guacamole, I have it open over here, is pretty neat. It's a lightweight, completely web-based, UI that allows you to connect to all your different services and VMs in one spot. And it's not gonna win any awards for its UI. It's pretty basic and it works for me. So I, I, that doesn't bother me. You're probably wondering, oh, why, why does this even matter? This doesn't seem that cool. In my case, um, and I know in a lot of people's cases who run home servers, you have a bunch of different um, VMs and services that require different connection types to get to them. So if you're running a Windows machine, you're gonna wanna RDP into that machine. If you're running a Linux desktop or Mac, you're gonna wanna VNC to get to it. Uh, for some services and server-based OSs, you're gonna have to SSH in and keeping track of all those different softwares to get to each different process or VM is a pain, but all that is in one spot with guacamole. So if we go down here to connections, you can see I have it kind of broken down into here are my Windows machines, uh, here are my Linux machines. Now, do I want to VNC into them or do I want to SSH into them? And then other for my Mac VM. So it's really cool. So if I want to just SSH into something, I could just click here, all that information is saved. And now I'm SSH'd into my Portainer VM. And then in the same GUI, I can go down here and let's check on my 
Windows VM that's actually mining right now. And just like that, I have a Windows desktop directly in my browser. It's so convenient to be able to access all my services and all my VMs within one web-based GUI. Okay, another thing you saw in there was Heimdall. So what Heimdall is, is essentially a glorified dashboard with links to your services. Basically, you'll see the different uh, processes or VMs or sites that I've set up that I frequent the most on my home network. So here you can see Portainer, uh, Proxmox, Nextcloud, we'll get to that in a second. IPMI, that's actually my IPMI for my motherboard. QNAP is actually my switch. Uh, Guacamole that we just saw, TrueNAS that we just saw, and PFSense is my router. All of this is located in one spot. It's essentially like a favorites bar, and you can see over here I actually have that. But the cool thing about this is that if you're on another machine that doesn't have all your bookmarks saved, uh, you can go directly to this one page and everything will be there ready to go. Pretty cool, uh, definitely useful. I recommend this as well as everything I'm kind of using right now. There's also Nextcloud and you can tell, man, there's no Nextcloud VM. Um, I didn't see Nextcloud in Portainer. So where are you running your Nextcloud from? And that's another cool feature if we go back to TrueNAS. Now I showed before that TrueNAS has the ability to run virtual machines, which makes it a contender for being your dedicated host operating system. But what it can also do is host these plugins. Now there's not as many as in like Portainer or something, but it does have some useful ones. Three that jumped off the page to me when I first looked at it were Nextcloud, Plex, and SyncThing. Nextcloud I actually have set up in here and that is where I am actually hosting Nextcloud from directly within my TrueNAS VM. So it'll set up a jail um, giving it its own dedicated kind of access to specific storage devices and spin up as if you were running Nextcloud on its own dedicated VM. I have it set up here. I have it exposed to the internet. I'll go over how I have that set up securely in a future video because my network setup is something I could probably talk about for its own full video. If we go back to TrueNAS, you can see it has Plex and SyncThing. And I know you saw that I was running SyncThing, so you're probably thinking, hey, why aren't you running SyncThing within your TrueNAS? And I actually tried to do that, but with the way I have my hard drive set up in TrueNAS and the way the jails work, it, it was this weird inception where I wanted to kind of sync the storage devices that SyncThing was running on. So if SyncThing got updated, it would update itself. And it was this whole mess. So instead of dealing with that, I just deployed it on its own VM. Eh. And Plex, I'm considering moving over to this if I don't decide to go the hardware uh, encoding route with the GPU. Just put it on the list of things I wanna do with the server. And then last but not least, I have two Windows 10 dedicated VMs, uh, each with its own dedicated graphics card passed through. There are plenty of guides out there for setting up uh, Windows-based machines with dedicated GPU pass-through. Um, I'll link the one I used below, but one of those is being used as a gaming machine since it's hooked up in the living room to a TV. And the other one is running uh, folding at home, so kind of providing GPU power for the greater good rather than just sitting there doing nothing. And then also over here, you can see I have this VPN. This is just a Ubuntu based VM that I run sometimes. Pop OS is another distribution of Linux that I was trying out. People like it, but I'm not really sold on it yet. And then you'll see this template down here. This is actually a pretty cool uh, feature of Proxmox is that you can build a template uh, virtual machine where you can deploy it just like that. So if I you know, wake up tomorrow and decide, oh, I need a, a VM, a Ubuntu VM to quickly test something out, a fresh copy, I can just go in here and clone that and it'll spin up an Ubuntu VM with all the same credentials, all the same storage. I don't have to go through the entire installation process. I can just easily spin up a brand new version of Ubuntu in 
a minute. That's my home server. Uh, I hope some of this was informative to you. And if there was anything in here that you'd like me to go into more detail about, then uh, feel free to drop a comment below. I'm more than happy to go into detail on some of these VMs or processes that I'm running. But if you like this video, be sure to drop a like below. If you're interested in anything tech or home server related and are actually interested in what my network setup is like, be sure to subscribe so you see when those videos are coming and um, see y'all in the next one.